Uh, it's a quick ending, right? All right, Monday night, 8 o'clock. We're ready to roll here. And uh, finally, I get to bring in a guest with me. Lee, you there? I'm here. Look at How that. you doing? I'm good. Lee Michaels joining us. As you know, the groups, it's the back in the day group on all platforms uh, and the WBMX group, which is growing pretty fast, right? Lee? I mean, you saw oh, the numbers yeah. earlier. Yeah. I mean, Can I borrow some of those from my page? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're the I'm guy, who, you're the guy who built it. You built it. I whole know, thing, but right? I've been, I've been off the scene for a minute and doing other things. So yeah. I haven't really spent a lot of time growing the Facebook. Yeah, you know, it's funny when you, when, when I talk about the, uh, you always like to know because I always, I learned from you too. Perception is everything when it sure. came to radio. So I you, know, you, you try and find out what's the perception of everybody when they go to the WBMX group page, or even when they came to the WBMX website, which now points to the Beat Chicago. Because I'm mm -hmm. just well, I just don't have the time to do all of it anymore. So I just forwarded yeah. over there. Yeah, but yeah. When you and you know they forget, you know. When you were there, was Renee and Angela? It was uh, you know, it was R and B with Luther Vandross, yeah. George Benson, yeah, yeah, you know, and the mixes were the accent to the radio station right. that nobody else did because they were all living in denial of friggin' reality back in the day in radio. Sure. So, um, but the perception it, you talk BMX house, house, house. It's all you heard. House, yeah. house, yeah. all. You know, Mr. Lee, Marshall Jefferson, because the mixes were such a big part of it back then. That's uh, true. Yeah, you know, and and look, I ain't gonna fight it. That, you know, on the live stream of the Beat Chicago, it's it's great golden grooves. You know, basically your thing. I it's all the classic R and B. Yeah, because yeah. I like I've it. About, I've been thinking about bringing that show back. I I have the domain name still, and never really, did. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for those of you, those of you just joining us, Lee Michaels sitting in with me, my my Yoda, and literally family to me for God, too many years. We don't want to we don't want to age you or me. And uh, right. no, I'm old. Yeah. You can you, you still have hair. I don't. <laughs> yeah, well, I get mine spray painted a lot. So uh, <laughs> okay. Now you you got a couple pieces here and there. Yeah. I can see. Yeah, it. I got. A I got a five head, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not a four head. <laughs> <Sure>. uh, <laughs> Sorry, so, my jokes are bad. And and Lee, and Lee is uh, in an area where they don't experience what we're experiencing here in Chicago with yep. this horse shit weather. How, what's the temperature? Well, it still gets a little cool at night. Where, what's the temperature? Uh, let me check real quick. It was in the 50s a little while All right, ago. Shut up. I don't know. That's okay. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, I didn't give a rub it in. It's 60, 61 here in the desert, uh, well, Las Vegas. Yeah. See now, <laughs> I told like I told you, I had this. This shit made me put on my big boy pants today. <laughs> yeah, I was forced. Good. Mother Nature affected my my course today, and I had to get out of my shorts and wear a pair of jeans today. I'm, You're the only guy in Chicago that's wearing shorts this time of the year. You, it's always a gorilla, man. I, I don't know how you can do it. It doesn't bother me too much, you know, but when it gets, you know, when there's snow on the ground and you got to walk through that stuff. Yeah. 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 It's and it's not fun. Then I'm going to need my big boy pink, but I refuse to wear. Remember them galoshes? Remember galoshes yeah. back in the day? Yeah. Ugly things. With my, <laughs> hey, did you ever, speaking of my, I had a pair of ski, bo ski boots once. Did you ever ski? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Ski, did you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I we had to, a, up to uh, Colorado and Utah, and on the a short weekend we'd go up to Wisconsin and ski. Yeah, see, the closest I ever came to skiing was grabbing on the back of a bumper <laughs> and, a, and, a, and going down the street. But I did, I did that original ski, the real ski thing. Yep. Uh, back it was New Year's Day of '86, and I went to Flagstaff, and they had a joint there called Snowball, or I think it was called Snowball. So I had never skied in my life before. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I water skied. That was easy. So how complicated. I never tried that. Oh, water skiing was a breeze. I had no problem. That's why I equated water skiing with, you know, skiing. I figured, okay, how, how complicated could this thing be? So I get my skis. It cost me 72 bucks. I'm with some friends. Now, this is like, you know, this is the, the year the uh, Giants went to the Super Bowl after the Bears. So it was there. Okay. 80, right. 80. Yeah, yeah. And, um. I go up and 
that you know that that chair thing that whatever they yeah, call that chair the swing lift. yeah chair, chair lift. Lift. yeah so you're going up and as you're going up you see different levels and it has a sign you know three thousand feet blah blah yeah. blah so yeah. I figure you know look I'm not I'm not gonna be a pansy I'm going all the way to the top so right. I'm at about ten thousand feet at the top of the snowball <laughs> and now the reality kicks and I'm like shit <laughs> how do I get off this thing <laughs> I you know I am thinking this thing's moving. How you were on that by yourself, nobody with you. I was with a friend of mine who got off with no problem, right? He's <laughs> like he gets up with me. I'm like, oh shit! I'm what am I? I'm gonna die. So I jump off. I'm about ten feet. Back. I jump off and stab myself in the back. It the, the pole thing found yeah. a way up my parka and stab me in the back. <laughs> I think okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. Yeah. So I, I get my I get my relatively thin ass at that time up. <laughs> and as you go to before you make that trek down the mountain, it's flat, you know, it, yeah, because yeah. You're, you're coming yeah. before you come around the bend to go down. Right, right. So I'm thinking, oh, man, uh, yeah, I'm in control now, man. This is cool. I got it all. So then I get to the turn where you're supposed to turn to get ready to make your descent down right. the mountain. Right. That's where all hell broke loose. It was over. I, uh, I had fallen down the first thousand feet for about forty minutes. Just kept tumbling and tumbling, and, and, and then I'd get up and I was like, "You son, I can't believe it!" And then I, you, one of the, they had like a little instructors, you know, little dudes. They're like, sir, have you ever skied before? I'm like, what is it? A trick question? You smartass. <laughs> no, I've never skied before. And he says, "Well, you know, you got a snowplow, and I'm thinking snowplow, and I'm looking like you know, Wait a minute. Now I'm going to get hit by a snowplow, right? No, but snowplow, I guess, is when you throw your skis together. Yeah, yeah like you, you point so, your, your skis in the front and kind yeah. of angle it into the snow. I figure, okay, let's get that a shed. I do that, I go flying right into a tree. I, I thought I did and right in the tree. So finally, right. I said, you know what? It, 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 it's, it's, you know, down. it's exactly what I did. I undid the galosh ski boot thing. The ski boots. Threw the skis over my shoulders, held it in. And and the guy, another he says, sir, would you like us to drive you down or do you need help? And there's like little five-year-old kids doing 50 miles an hour past me. What am I going to say? Yes, you're scared. Help me. No. Oh, no. my God. What I a down, yeah, I walk down and guess who I wind up with? I go to the lodge, right? I <laughs> sit in the lodge, right? My friends are all having fun. They're up and down the mountain, you know, four or five times. I go find the only guy from New York in all of Flagstaff. He was a Giants fan. So we sat there and bullshitted for like three, four hours, got knocked out, blind drunk, talking right. football. And you, know, you start talking food with me. Um, right, right. <laughs> it's over. And we, we had a vehement, a huge disagreement over what real pizza is. You yeah. know, he was he's one of them guys that was into those real big pieces. You know, yeah, like, yeah. They, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. That's just not pizza. <laughs> yeah, he met the wrong guy when it comes to uh, talking. Food and pizza, especially. So you skied in Colorado too, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Colorado, Utah, uh, where else? Um, Wisconsin. Did you take uh, lessons? No, you know really? I'm an idiot. No, you know. Well, yeah, on the bunny run. On what was that little ski place right on eighty um, uh, eighty three out in like Bolingbrook, Naperville? There used to be a little bunny hill over there. Off to the right. I if don't know. Towards, going towards 55, Route 83. It was a, like a, a apartment complex right next to it. But anyway, I went there first. I mean, over by the, um, over by the, uh, right the behind Santa Fe up. used to be? Yeah, like, in that area. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't remember. I, I wasn't an avid ski guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there for like a day. And I, I had fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. So I went to, went to the sporting goods place and bought skis, boots, the, the whole outfit, the goggles, the poles, and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was a professional skier after that, at least in my mind. And then so, we were, so you took one or two lessons and you were already a professional skier. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You can believe what you want to believe. Sometimes you got to bullshit yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. We went up to uh, Breckenridge <laughs> and... Uh, what were some of the other ski places? Uh, went up to Vail, 
Yeah, we I hit some some Oh Vale. That's like there's no there's no peasants anywhere near Vale, right? <laughs> other, other than the servants, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like, this remember that scene, you know, like that scene in Just Visiting, one of my favorite scenes in the movie Just Visiting. The peasants sitting eating <laughs> in in a restaurant in this really fancy restaurant. Right. And and his his uh nobleman starts throwing fat at him in the restaurant. <laughs> and the server walks up and says, Sir, he cannot you can't have him sit there. He has to eat at the table. And Jean Renault, who was the uh, the novel, says, he is but the peasant. He is not worthy to dine with us. <laughs> and the guy goes with his peasants in the bathroom eating the, the blue ice. And she, oh, my God. You ever, didn't, didn't you, did you watch Just Visiting with me when, when you were here? Did you watch it? So. No, oh, no. my God. Hold on. Film, it was filmed. Most of it was filmed here in Chicago. Christine Apple, Christina Applegate. Uh, Got a couple, great story from it got lost in a bunch of really good movies in 2001 actually <laughs> so we can always tie it right back to the beat the movie is yeah. also on the, the beat chicago.com uh when you go to that free movies section you you've seen that right all the movies that are on the beats website yeah, oh, yeah. It's a nice collection but you're a movie buff how many how many videos or cds of movies do you have at all uh, oh i don't know I'm just, yeah, it's a shame now because the DVDs are pointless. You know, there's probably about 18, 1900 DVDs. At least half of them never got opened. And, you know, last, was it like two, last year, <laughs> last year or two years ago? Was it, no, the last year I was a voting member for the awards. So what they do, um, if you're a SAG member and you're a voting member, um, they send you out all this insane promo shit. Right, of all the shows, all the movies, and then on top of that, they send you um, free, uh, like a month or two month subscription to Hulu, Netflix, blah blah blah, all this other stuff because they want your yeah, votes. Catch up, yeah, right. So they're paying you to watch this stuff, and you know. Then I got here. Hang on, let me pull something. I'll show you. Ah, where is it? Here's I got oh, like this right here. He is a collector of movies and okay, music. I'm coming. All right. Next question. Look at, this. look at this thing. Can what you, the hell is that? Look at that. Hang on. Let me put my, my buds on here. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> I mean, we get so much shit. I get so much shit sent to me and so much garbage. And, you know, and I'm not a collector, but. What is a lunchbox for a kid? It, it, this was for the marvelous Mrs. Maisie. Oh, boy. Uh, so they send you out this kit to vote for, right? Uh, and I've never, yeah, I know, right? Uh, hey, look at that. Todd, Todd, say hi to Todd Lee. T Todd, hey, Todd. Hey, let me bring Todd over here for a second. Uh, howdy. Yeah, it looks like a Barbie thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Right. So, and then what they do is they pack it with all this stuff, with this, you know, really nice stuff. You get a little booklet, pictures. CDs, no, wow. I won't. And, and you know, and actually, it's, it's a funny show. It's a cute show. Um, comedians back in the day. Uh, look at this. They give even like coasters from the fictitious oh, hotel, yeah. and uh, oh, you know what? I never even saw this. <laughs> I've had this for two years. This is something new. <laughs> well, anyways, if you can see them, they are up uh, that way. Poker chips. Oh, nice. Like from back in the day. In, in well, can you take that whole intersection out and maybe put some uh, some uh, roast beef and uh, sausage sandwiches in there? You know, I was just thinking, <laughs> I could probably fit five, six, <laughs> at least five to six meatballs in here. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and and, um, and maybe yeah. maybe two, three pounds of beef. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you get so much of this stuff. Um, and... Me, you know, the, well, we, you know, we, you know, we started dig, we started going digital in the nineties. Remember, remember our term for oh, those, you know, again, Lee Michaels joining us, a uh, man who created WBMX and a whole lot of other things that radio uses today, and he's he's like family to me, and we go way back and um, with cyber radio, the I ramp. Uh, Mm -hmm. We were this close to make it. I tell oh. people all the time the story where I was in a grocery store. I want to say it was a Dominic's or something like that. And this was early cell phone days when you were back at the studio mm -hmm. playing around with trying to get 
the stream to come into a cell phone because you are the guy that said when this streaming gets on these little devices and it was, it was a flip phone. Okay, folks, <laughs> We're back in the flip phone days, he says, then everybody will be tuning into the internet. Sal, you called it. You're a hundred percent right. Then I thought you were a little crazy, but you know, I, I'm, I was kind of a cutting edge believer as well. So that's why I was hanging with you. That's because if we can get this thing to work. And I remember the day I was in the grocery store shopping and you had just called me and says, okay, try it now and see if this works. And damn it, I was picking it up. And, <laughs> oh my God, this is, he figured it out. And I think we had just switched from real audio to Windows Media Server. Yeah, that had to be 99 or 2000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I tell people how Microsoft sent us a compact server. You remember that? With oh, yeah. Windows Media yeah. Server. All yeah. of it. Well, they hoard all of us out. Microsoft yeah. hoard us all out. They used <laughs> yeah. us. They used us, and then they said, "Okay, thanks for building us, and uh, see yeah. you later, bye." Exactly. We figured this out. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's like Mark Cuban, and mm -hmm. and when when I well, you weren't lobbying any longer when I was live. You were already you you weren't doing the lobby, but I had gone down to DC. Yeah, yeah when you I, did. And when I when I had gotten all those signatures, you know, I was glad. I was like, wow, I got 32 people to sign off on that small webcasters act back in, oh, I think it was 07 or 08. Can't remember. But that was yeah. that was when I threw in the towel and lobbying because I realized that they were all just really low life, worthless pieces of shit. <laughs> and there was nothing I could possibly do anymore. But now they've changed since then, haven't they? Uh, Lee, the only people, <laughs> the only people who remain constant are people that I like who are <laughs> still around me. And you, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> but you mean all those members of Congress that you met back in the day, they're still, uh, they're, they're still a piece of shit or what? Oh, God. And they're still there. <laughs> they're still there, and they're still making more money than me and you and better pensions than me and you. And that's anyway. what's scary. Based yeah. on the salary that they're making, yeah. anyway. I make more money than they did. Yeah. When they come out of there, whether they get thrown out or retire, they walk out with Hundred million, fifty million, thirty million dollars in the bank. Tell me how that works. They're they're set for life because how, how do you do that off one hundred eighty to two hundred thousand a year? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I honestly, God, please, my blood's going to get flowing. <laughs> I'm going to have an anger management issue. So no, yeah, I've been really good. I can't lately. drag you into that corner. Huh? Uh, <laughs> no, I learn. I, I I learn, man. I learn. You know. You'll be in Facebook jail in 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's better for me to just go punch a heavy bag and get it uh, all out. Uh, and then, uh, but uh, anyways, <laughs> so back to that. We were this close. Yeah. Um, and then Mark Cuban came along and screwed everybody. Yeah, he did. Mark didn't, com. didn't give us. We had more traffic than him. That's and, right. That stunt that he pulled. Uh, it's why every time I see this guy in TV, it's like if you only knew what a piece of shit this maggot really was. If what you did only he do with that, he brought broadcast dot com. Well, remember at first we were we had, there was nego there was negotiations going on. Lycos was Lycos had just about taken over Yahoo. It's got to be about ninety eight, ninety nine. Yahoo was still using Google as its. Uh, a lot of people forgot Google was the search engine for Yahoo at the time. Mm -hmm. So. Yahoo was petrified, or Yahoo was petrified that Lycos was about to take over the number one position for search engines. So Cuban had connections. He had the people, don't forget, his, his partner and his partner's father at the law firm, blah, blah, blah. Everybody else got nuzzled. Not only did we get nuzzled out, he cut a deal where he knew that, and, and it's not like I'm slandering this low life because it's written in the record. Yeah. He he put all of that. They, 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 they were getting ready to g determine royalties. Remember, it was all about the royalties. They were going to make royalties retroactive, blah, blah, blah. Cuban made an offer talking about, about what the royalty level should be. That's what they went with. And he made that offer knowing that it would knock out thousands yeah. of broadcasters yeah. and Yahoo wouldn't have to worry about the competition. And to show you how stupid the majority of the people that work at these tech firms are, 
these idiots paid $5.7 billion for something that had less traffic than the majority of us. We weren't the only broadcaster yeah. at that time that had that kind of numbers. They paid right. $5.7 billion for that hunk of shit and boarded it up in, what, a year or two. They they, they took the, uh, the broadcast.com domain, pointed it, to, then it became launch. Remember launch? Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Then that yeah. failed. Then they pointed everything to Yahoo. So they paid $5.7 billion to flush down the toilet. But they're the smart guys at the tech companies. They're the geniuses. Right yeah, here. <laughs> what they didn't understand was broadcasting. Well, yeah. They know right. how to make stuff work you know, on the internet, but they didn't understand the broadcast animal. And nor did they reach out to people like us that knew and understood and had a foothold on what makes you know things work in broadcasting. Yeah, you know, Todd had a good question, too, which which goes right to this. And uh, Todd is, you know, when did they stop really using DJs to play music via programming? So back in the day, Lee, when you were at BMX, mm -hmm. were you, you were formatted, fully structured formatted? Or yeah, we were. We, everything was pre-programmed, um, and the jocks had a, a list that they had to follow. Mm -hmm. But they had the ability to be personalities on top of that music. The reason it was done that way is we researched all of the music with the audience. And so we knew what they liked or disliked and it just made it more consistent. However, if a air personality came to me or one of the hot mix guys came in with a song and I thought it was good, I, I would incorporate it into the rotation. So it, we ha I allowed that type of input, mm -hmm. but probably it, that freedom of DJs uh, to play whatever they wanted to play, that really kind of ended in the late 60s. I was going to say it had to be the 60s yeah. because they started getting structured coming into the 70s. Yeah, and, and what forced that was the payola scandals. Yeah. You know, the, the radio station ownership had to get control of it because uh, so many people were getting accused of payola. Now, let me ask you, so back then, what songs became hits? Uh just for, well, yeah, you're at BMX. What songs became hits that you just shook your head and said, what is that shit that you didn't get? <laughs> what is that? Uh, the first time I heard somebody else's guy with that long intro on it, I went. Oh, oh really? Jocelyn Brown with that, yeah. with that acapella intro? Yeah. Really? Come on, get to it. Get to it. I wanted oh, okay. to edit that off because right. I wanted to get right, right to the yeah. meat and potatoes. Yeah. That one was a little strange. Um Double Dutch bus. I despise that record. Oh, still, come on. Frank, uh, what's no. wrong with you? I played it, but I didn't like it personally. I didn't really. Like it. Yeah. Frank, I oh, my God. Hang on. Wait. Let me hang on. <laughs> Don't play it. Don't do hang that. Hang on. Hang on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, man. Please. I'm begging. Oh, God, go easy on Frankie. <laughs> Frankie Smith. We had one hit this whole oh, life. Man. Oh. Cool. So, wait, wait, let me pull this up here. I hope, he, I hope he wrote the range and produced it so he could get some royalty. So I don't know when I've heard it on the radio, though. It's been a long time. Well, think about this. You ready for this? The song's <laughs> 40 years old. Yeah, right. Damn, is it? 40 that? years old. Here, watch this. It's in the screen. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at a video, though. There is a video for it. Oh, yeah, I remember. Give me a hoe. I got you. Now, think of this, too. 1981. How many people were smart enough to be shooting videos in 1981? Yeah, really. So yeah, this is expensive. I mean, to well, yeah, and think of this. It was WMOT. WMOT was what? A division of fantasy? It was, wasn't yeah. a major label. So that was right. some expensive stuff back in the day to be shooting that video. That's and true. For, and that video is in the music videos section of the beach, Chicago.com, as you can see. Oh, right I'm here. sorry. <laughs> brought to you, brought to you in part by. Um, God. <laughs> um, hey, uh, why did that bring that one up? Huh? For more, let's hey, real quick, because you know we did. Remember, I did a feature on um, Chicago radio icons, and it, it was on air personally. I didn't know if you wanted me to do a feature on uh, your, your Ross and what was your morning show of. Uh, um, Famous and Ross. Famous and Ross. And I, couldn't, I couldn't find much on it. I already know everything else about it, but I couldn't find much on it out there. So Yeah, it, it was um, short-lived, <laughs> I guess. 
And I haven't seen Brenda or heard from her in I don't know when. The last time I saw Brenda, mm-hmm. it was in L.A. I was going up La Cienega Boulevard right there at the top where sunset it comes right to the top at sunset. Mm-hmm. And I looked over to my left. She was in the left-hand learn, uh, turn lane. I was in the right. And I waved at her and I you know, honked the horn and rolled the window. I said, Brenda, what's up now? I, I hadn't seen her in years at that point. Mm-hmm. She looked at me like she was looking at a stone wall. <laughs> she pulled Wow. Me. Well, damn, did I do something to upset you or what? But think about that. How weird is it? We're in a completely different part of the planet. Yeah. With all the square footage of this planet, you happen to see that same person in that spot. Yeah. I, I who, guess. Who I knew? Yeah. Who would, yeah. Who would have thunk it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. And, and I, I haven't seen or heard anything about her since really? then. But you know, for Doug, when Oops. you brought, how did you bring Doug? When you brought Doug Banks to Chicago, a lot of Doug started at BMX, then wound up, and I, I found a great video that we put up in that feature that we did mm-hmm. uh, on the beat because there was a killer video with him and Tom, um, um, when they were at GCI though. Okay, uh, but for BMX, and and those of you, you can see in the screenshot here, uh, you just do a search for Doug Banks, you'll find the special. That we did on the beach, Chicago. Um, a lot of look at that. Remember Natalie? Oh yeah. Uh, Gary Deeb. Remember? Oh, that yeah, him? absolutely. Yeah. Feeder still bald. Uh, what else? <laughs> uh, Farley. That was that was for uh, I think Doug's birthday. So yeah, we did a nice feature. And look at those numbers. Let me tell you, the Cumes in Chicago radio today. Yeah. Embarrassing, bro. Really? Embarrassed. Embarrass. Two stations Cumin passed one million. That's it. Wow. Yeah, they've destroyed radio. They've made an absolute mockery out of it. Yeah, destroyed it's it. all been, you know, sliced dice and kicked to the side. Well, they, you know, they, they've they, they've conditioned their own reasoning for why it's occurred as well. And they say, well, the kids are listening to this. The kids are listening. Look, we told them, you and I both, remember when we sat down at that meeting with Clear Channel Interactive? Was yeah. it 20 years ago? Right? Think, yeah. And we told them exactly what, and three, four years later, they built iHeart radio. Yep. So they were, but they're, st- they're still, they were, digging. they were looking for information that they didn't yeah. know. Yeah. And we were dumb enough to give inter- it to them. Yeah. They interviewed probably a hundred people and came up with a consensus and there you have it. Just but they, like when, they didn't want to hire you to come in and do it. You know, and I was, I was at the height of my anger yesterday, trying to think about who the schmuck was that we were dealing with when we almost had cyber sold again. And it was John Breyer. Was it when right. me, yes. You, we have, have, um, um, Maine broad, broadcast America. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, uh, we, there was, they were, a, they were, I don't think they were legal citizens. <laughs> to be honest with I, you. Look, Lee and I are, we, we were like two, Two people who had absolutely no business being in the middle of Portland, Maine. First off, we we stood out like sore thumbs. And they and see, but here's the deal: at that time, they were trying to make that portion of the East Coast yeah. the uh, the, the uh, tech corridor for the exactly. East Coast, yeah. Versus what they were doing out in uh, you know in Cupertino and exactly. San Jose and on Seattle and Redmond and all that. Yeah. So and they had put an offer on the table and. But we we smelled something funny about it. Yeah, and it, it was just and, a little slimy. Yeah, and then they went bankrupt us, and then they they wanted to sue us for going bankrupt. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Right. It like like you gave us some money to do something with it, and you know they were spending money left and right up there trying to build out the infrastructure. We yeah. saw that server room. Yeah, that was nuts. Yeah. And we were you and I looked at each other like. What are they doing? All that? you don't need that much. Yeah, you know, it was nuts, and they were paying real networks like a million dollars a quarter. To, why are you paying somebody right. to limit the amount of people that can see and exactly. hear you? Exactly, dumbest shit we ever saw. And I, and, and, I, money. and I got into a. I mean, I had gotten into such a massive screaming match with them, uh, and this is when I was still living in the towers in Lombard. Um, that the neighbors called the police. Really? I was up, we were up on the seventh floor. Uh huh. And I mean, I lit into him and, you know, basically he, he had to feel about three inches tall when I got done with him. I'm and, sure. and, um, yeah, and then they went belly up. 
they went yeah. belly up. It was like, well, no great loss to the planet Earth. You know, adios. Next yeah. well, they they caused their own pain. Yeah, yeah, not the brightest yeah, bulb. Yeah, and, and we couldn't figure out where the hell they were getting all their money from. You know, they kept getting all this dollars. Jesus, what do I, who do I got to know to get that kind of money? Yeah. Uh, crazy. So you brought Doug. In. Funniest, yeah. Give me a funniest story about Doug. Wow. There's too many. One that pops up out of nowhere. Well, okay. I'll go back to well, I have several. Let me get, go to, to L.A. I was working at 1580 K-Day, and... Jim Maddox found this kid in Detroit by the name of Doug Banks that uh, had sent in an audition tape. And he played the tape for all of the guys there at the station and wanted us to kind of give our input in terms of whether or not he should hire the guy. Mm -hmm. And we all thought that, you know, this guy is really talented. He can, he can rock the box, right? And they, I said, well, how old is he? Because he sounded a little young. He said, he's 18. I said, I was the only one that said, Jim, don't bring him to Los Angeles because, you know, 18 years old in the big city uh, will probably crush this guy and, and get him on the wrong track. Oh, so he was only 18. 18, yeah. Wow, yeah. And uh, so he, he hired him anyway. In the meantime, I left and I came back east for another job. And <laughs> I ended up replacing Doug about a year or so later. <laughs> Because he burnt out. Mm -hmm. Doug was wild and crazy. He was in the clubs and hanging out with everybody, all the stars and everything, and would miss shows. He would he would show up. So they fired him. That's and, right out of Sly Stone's handbook. Exactly. <laughs> and then I came in and replaced Doug. Let me tell you something. It was the the most humiliating experience I ever had in all my years in radio. I would answer the phone and they said, where's Doug? I said, well, Doug's no longer here. Screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> we want Doug. So, I mean, after I had about 50 calls like that, uh, I said, I'm not answering the phone anymore. He had made such an impression mm. on his audience there in LA that they didn't want nobody. I don't care how good you were. They, nobody wanted to, they didn't want to listen to anybody. They wanted DB. Mm. So that was the first time. Then the second time I actually hired him, I then was working as a program director and operations manager at a station called KKSS, which we converted while I was there to Magic 108 in St. Louis. So I brought him in. Doug came, I picked him up at the airport there in St. Louis. He came off the airplane with a paper bag like you go, get from the grocery store. Mm. I said, so, okay, let's go down to the baggage claim and get your stuff. He goes, no, nope, don't have any. I said, well, did you ship your stuff here? Well, nope, this is it, what I got in the bag. Now, bag, he had on a T-shirt, some shorts, a pair of tennis shoes, and one of the tennis shoes had a slice in the side of his foot was halfway hanging out. I said, Doug, where's your stuff, man? He goes, well, no, I just I got rid of everything. I'll just have to get everything new here. I said, oh, boy. So I put him on the air, and the promotion to promote Doug was he was the unknown DJ. Didn't let him go out. Nobody saw him for at least a month, and there was a big concert that came in at the Keel Auditorium, and Doug, we had him out there as the MC. He came out with that same bag he got off the airplane with, with holes cut in it. Like the unknown comic from the gong show, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. how we introduced Doug Banks to St. Louis. He blew up overnight. And uh, and then I left, came to Chicago. When I first got there, I went to GC. I was doing midday. Then when I left there, I went over to BMX. And that's when I hired Doug the second time. Brought him in. Doug blew up. Doug got into some crazy stuff going on. And then he left, went to Las Vegas, where I am now. And then I hired him again. So I hired Doug three times. Wow. Probably the only PD in the country that ever hired Doug Banks three times. And then he just, that was it. From there he went on yeah. to. Yeah. He went off to a superstar to, you know, land. Became syndicated in 30, 40 radio stations. And, you know, he did well. I'm really, really proud to see how he grew into, you know, where, where he landed. 
Yeah, it was sad when he passed. Yeah. I tell you, it was sad because he, 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 yeah, he had one hell of a. He, he was a. What's that word? All those hoity-toity, sophisticated people use. He was. Uh, he was <laughs> jelly. He was very jovial. <laughs> jovial. That's a good one. Had a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, there's I don't I don't know anybody else in the business that I've worked with that was quite like him from a personality standpoint and just who he was, you know. He was not, that was Doug Banks. Period. See, I don't think um, you can even have radio like that any longer, though. I don't think the talent oh. is out there. I don't think those judging the talent would understand talent anymore. They absolutely, do not. And I don't know if, because, you know, as we talked about the conditioning of minds and how people just are, don't even realize they're being conditioned. I don't know if they can even handle that kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they, I, I, I just think that's, it's a lost art form, sadly. And I love when people say, we need to bring it back. We need to bring it back. Dude, we had it. You walked away from it. Well, you know? <laughs> or or You're right. Taken away. Yeah, I mean, it was taken know. away. It, yeah. it was flush because the cost of talent scared a lot of the broadcasters. And when when they don't what they didn't understand and still don't understand. Oh, hang on, hang on. My there's mom. mom. There's yeah. mom. Hi, mom. What's up, mom? I know who she is. Come on. Dang. And I got your album and love it. Yeah, he downloaded. Yeah, he there's downloaded. a singing woman right there. Mama can sing. Yeah. No yeah. joke. Yep. Yep. Yes, she I'm a, can. I'm a, I'm a blower up. Go buy the CD, download it off of Amazon. You can get it right now. What's the name of it, Sal? Uh, you must believe in spring. It's uh, jazz That's standards, right. classic, classic, full, uh, full, full orchestras, full. I mean, just I guess, nobody cuts that way anymore. No, no. I mean, this is top notch. When you talk artistry, you talk talent, um, musicianship. Um, this is top notch. Real um, musicians. Yeah. Yeah. People reading music, actually reading, you know, and that was, yeah. So one thing I was, yeah. Even when I was a kid, I always perceived or I always saw, you know, when I hear things, I literally visualize the musician in the studio sitting, reading the music, you know, and yeah. I, reading the music, playing. The real notes. I don't, it's just, it's, you know, it, I don't know, it, maybe it's just, in my head, the way I program, but I, when I hear certain things, mm -hmm. uh, like especially every, and I'm not a jazz guy. I'm just, see, my mom and my dad, pure jazz, pure jazz. My, me, disco, blues, RB, that was it. I, I didn't, you know, I, yeah, Ramsey Lewis, okay, nice. And yeah. you won't, you know, you know, whatever. But I, you know, for me, Antonio Carlos Joe Beam, I just liked because it, I had a memory of that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Sergio Mendez, Brazil 66. But when it got to groups like Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Chase, yeah. uh, yeah. you guys who had horn sections and rhythm yeah. sections. And then you got into the, when you had the voices with Teddy Pennergrass and these guys that had these big, huge, booming voices. And the same thing, yeah. like, because my mother had a, has, it's still it's at her still. age has a, a yeah. voice like that. You know, Absolutely. those are things that really interest me the most. And again, and I've told people, yeah, I didn't mind rock and roll. You know, I, I look, I could sit here and go head to head with every hippie on the face of the earth and any classic rock programmer because I programmed the shit. I right. did it in my sleep. It bored me because you could find it anywhere and everywhere at any time back in the day. Yeah. yeah. But try you try and find Leon Haywood. I want to do something freaky to you. You know, right, or you right. try and find Tyrone, uh, Tyrone Davis, if I could turn back the hand at time. Those were the songs you couldn't find everywhere. And that's why I right. enjoyed programming that stuff because I, I, I saw music. I saw guys yeah. in the studio, even if they weren't good musicians, because a lot of that shit back in the day, at least some of the musicians, musicians were terrible, but that's some of the beauty of it is that because it takes you back to that time, that era, that point. That's time. Right. It's a, it's a it's time right. piece. It is. It yeah. is. Whether it's good or bad off key. I'm, you know, look, I'm still the believer that Beyonce, look, even auto-tune can't help her. I hear her and I, I, it just, I, it goes through me, dude. It goes through me. No uh, comment. <laughs> yeah. But come on, man. Again, don't bullshit yourself in life. Oh, she's a great performer. She's an amazing performer. She can, she commands the stage like 
And she's Nobody. taller and she's taller than you and me put together. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but even back in the there's day, there's a lot know. of be- lot of females out there that can sing r- rings around her. Yeah, but absolutely. It's the full but, production. But there's thing, right, you know? see, and and that's what I mean. See, the, for, for God bless from- her. I'm, I'm happy for her success. I I broke her first record, the the no 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 record at WBLS in New York. Yeah, but nobody else would play it. But did you play her record from Star Search? No, you weren't that hip. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't that hip. <laughs> that's no. about that's when she was about as tall as me. Yeah, when she was at Star Search. Yeah, exactly. But, um. <laughs> but you know, even in a lot of the freestyle records, remember, you know, you remember freestyle, right? Cynthia, sure. uh, Dr- you know, you, George Lamont, man, that kid could sing when we were young. And I was like, man, this guy's got a set of pipes on him. And yeah. then he had a lot of them who couldn't sing. They just, they, they couldn't get on key if the auto tune, they just, it didn't help them. <laughs> However, entertainment and an entertainer is one thing, a singer is another and then there's those who can do them both yeah exactly. you know and that's for me when it comes to the arts i, I i'm good with anyone or all of the above but i can't handle one that has none <laughs> I can't do it double dutch bus well come on he talked <laughs> but he at least he talked in key he talked in key go easy yeah it. yeah it was it was a novelty to say the least no question about that yeah, say, uh, you know, you got to go easy on. What, who the hell ran WMOT? Was that Harvey Fuqua I that, had fa- that had fantasy? I think Harry, I think it was Harry Fuqua back then. Well, the guy did all kinds of, my God, he had so many hit records. Yes. Yeah. Well, you were dealing with Bell for a while. Weren't you dealing with Tom Bell for a while way back in the day? Oh, of course. Yeah. Tom Bell and Gamble and Huff, you know, the all the major, you know, um, Stax records. You know, I mean, uh, if you were in R and B radio, you had to know all the head guys at all the big, you know, R and B companies. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when I, when my mother put it, we had uh, she had "Love Found Me Just in Time," which was that ballad. I think it's on the other album. And I was out doing promo, and back in the day, a lot of you know, there, there used to be a thing called record. What was your record day at BMX? Did you have record day? Uh, what day? Mondays. Mondays? Mondays. So. Tuesdays became like the record day in a lot of a lot of the uh, radio stations. So I go to a bunch of different radio stations. We got some ads and everything. But when I really figured out how screwed up the music industry was, where, I mean, beyond belief, was when I had modern tracks. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I was actually, you know, you, you, I was streaming audio samples on the website in 96. That's right. And I was trying to make it easy for not only the club DJs are trying to make it easy for the record pools and the radio stations and the PDs and the labels to be able to communicate online, to hear the songs, write the songs, determine the songs, get the ads, get the whatever. So it would accelerate a lot of what mm-hmm. took too much time to do back in the exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. They, they were still mailing CDs back in those days and you uh-huh. were ahead of your time by putting it online like that. When people were still on 300, Bod uh, <laughs> uh, let me see. It was 28 8. It was 95. Oh, okay. My mom helped me, and, and, and I got a but copy. Again, you were ahead of most people, but I think most people might have been on 1200 bod. Uh, no, no, 28 8 and 95. You know, when the 1200, let's see, in 88, when I was a broker, and I had a, I used to, I was getting online to get my, my stochastic charts. Um, I was, it was a 2,400 bought. No, I'm sorry. 9,600 bought 9,600. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I had a Packard bell 9,600. Yeah. I had a Packard bell. Was it right? Packard bell 20. It it was just a real, those were when the computers, you couldn't, you couldn't take anything out of them. Whatever you bought, that was it. Once a computer upgraded, you're screwed. Throw it in the garbage. Go spend another $800. So by 95, though, we were at 28.8, and then we went to that 56.6 with the V.90 bog modem. Remember the, yep, the yep. V.90? And then I had started getting high-speed internet access in the office, right. uh, in the studio. And um, you, got, you had DSL, right? Well, I had DSL at first. Right. And, and you know, that, first I knew they had DSL. Yeah, yeah. Well, because that I was, was, what, 128? Yeah, 128. Uh, mm-hmm. I, and that was because... Um, we were, I was 
producing a show here in Chicago. And there was the first KRXS was a little rimshot station out in the middle of like mm-hmm. Apache Junction, Arizona. Mm-hmm. God bless the guy who gave me the chance. I said, here's what I want to do. I'm going to broadcast on the internet. You're going to pick up the stream on your computer and broadcast <laughs> it to your people on the FM. Right. Said, and he was, how's that going to sound? It'll sound wonderful. Because remember, I was, I, I used to stay in the office for like eight days. At least. You'd have to, I mean, you had to come dig me out. That's right. And Derek, too, got, got all the oh, work yeah, Derek yeah. did. And oh, yeah. We would sit there and just experiment with codec after codec, setting after setting. What works? What doesn't work? How can we get this to sound? We had crystal clear audio sound at 48K. Yeah. Uh, the average person, just trust me, it was unheard of at that time. Oh, and, way, way ahead of everybody. Yeah. So we, and the reason why we had the ISDN is because we were able to transmit. He was able to get the signal without a lot of buffer, and he was broadcasting to the area to the people in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Cyber radio was on the FM, and we did the same thing here with CKG. You know, when we did that with CKG. So it, it, it took about 10 years, well, no, 15 years for them to finally start using internet At feeds. Some point you got a T1 in there, didn't you? No, you know what? You got a T1? Did I have the T1 there? I had one for, for a short period. No, no, but I did have a T1 here because when I first moved here, uh, they didn't even have high-speed internet access. Yeah, yeah. So I had a fractional. I had a fractional T1. Fractional. Yeah, and and then we got high speed internet access about oh yeah. two, and I was like, oh okay, <laughs> back to now, normal. Just think, T one was one point five four megabytes. One point four, yep, yep. And and th- that was like the cat's meow back in the day. Yeah, that's it was unheard of. Yeah. that's well, I mean, you, you, who would want a T one anymore? Well, think about this when yeah, when like fifteen hundred dollars a month. Oh, it was insane. The, 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 yeah. It was insane. Well, here you want to talk about insane. When I programmed, I was the uh, programmer for Cyber City, Taste Mm -hmm. of Chicago. This was in 97 when we were on 92.7. And the uh, taste of people that I was doing business with, they needed somebody to handle the entire programming of Cyber City. Mm -hmm. Cyber City was the introduction of literally the internet to the city of Chicago at the Taste of Chicago. Um, and it had a big tent, and it was in conjunction with Prodigy Internet Services. Mm-hmm. Wow, Prodigy. Yeah. Me- Meg Zynette, who was hosting yeah. our stuff, and a bunch of other companies. And um, I got the, I had scheduled interviews. I had Herb Kent. We had, uh, I mean, anybody in the industry just that I could fill up. And at that time, we, I was told that we had set the record for the longest and the biggest stream continuous stream i mean there was like seven hundred thousand people watching these streams wow back in 97 now our in, in order to accompany to, to accommodate all of that um internet business district was the company which uh turned out to be real pieces of shit anyways sorry just <laughs> you, you know how my mind works things pop right in <laughs> anyways they had negotiated a deal with um i forgot who it was where we had a wireless T3 internet access to the top of the proof, uh, to the top of the proof, uh, a prudential building. Right, so right. from where That's we right. are, I shooting about up, yeah. we had a wireless T3 connection and it was $45,000 a day. Wow. wow. Now, now, this little thing right here blows that away. Yes. That's how expensive internet was back in the day. Just That's like right. the, just like your cell phones. Think about the cell phone. Remember, we used to get billed by the minute. And with the best part of your cell phone bill was, hey, from 605 to 612, those are my off-peak hours. When it's only 50 cents a minute to talk. Right. They right. gave you like four minutes during the day to get the off-peak. Yeah. These people don't have a Because we were, we jumped on it and we uh, used it. My first phone bill was it seven hundred? I think it was like seven hundred dollars. I, I said, think my first one was eleven hundred. And I said, "Oh my god, I'm an asshole. I'm screwed." <laughs> yeah, but a car payment. Yeah, house payment. Yeah, you know, let's get to some of the posts real quick here, so we can okay. roll uh, some of the big posts that were in the BMX group. Again, talking with Lee Michaels, 
WBMX. Anytime you guys listen to mixes, thank him. He was the one who made it happen. Say hi again, Lee. Hi well, there. I mean, you, had to, you had to be smart enough to do it because nobody else wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. I got tired of going toe to toe with WGCI, so I said, "Well, I need to find something a little bit different that would." I didn't think that they would follow me on, and I was absolutely right. I think it was almost two years before they started playing mixes on GCI. Well, they only did it wasn't that quite that long, but it seemed yeah, like forever. Yeah, well, they did that when um, I think when you left, and then. Mickey and Kenny and Farley went over to GCI and they left Frankie well, stranded. <laughs> well, yeah, because I left uh, BMX. Well, I left BMX, went to San Francisco, and I came back. And then, no, 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 no. When I left BMX, I went to GCI for the second time around. Mm -hmm. And and um, that's when I brought over the Hot Mix 5. We actually had to go to court. There was a court case. Oh, over yeah, that's right. And there was just yeah. a brief period of time left on the yeah. contract. Right, right. Exactly. And and the judge ruled in 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 uh, favor of WGCI that it was okay for us to bring them over, and it was funny because the judge had a sense of humor. He says, "Well, maybe WBMX, you need to come up with another name, maybe the Hot Mix Six or something." But these guys can go. <laughs> well, they did. Did they use was well, Super Mix Six? Was that GCI? Yes, right? Something was, like that. Yeah. yeah. And Rob Olson, you know, right here, Rob, just like we were talking about Cum, right, Lee, a couple of minutes yeah, ago. Yeah. Rob Olson said, "Can you believe that GCI is down to a two share?" Are you serious? <laughs> oh, you got to see the numbers. The numbers are who's, just who's taking after, them away from them? I, 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 you know, between them and Power, and Power's numbers ain't all that spectacular either. So, and and B's numbers are abys. B's, I think, are like a one three, one four, they're abysmal. They're uh, BM, BM, B96? Yeah, B96 is in the gutter. It's rolling around on life support. I think it's time, it's time somebody take a vacation or somebody retire but because he's made a mess. Where is the audience going? But, I mean, you know, it's a good question. You know, a lot of people. Are they just they, leaving commercial radio as we know it and going to I, the I, I know. Well, ask, <laughs> yourself, ask yourself this too, Lee. How much of the bullshit numbers can you believe to? You have well, a bad, you know what I mean? You have a bad book. The one guy sneezes, he's got the cold for three weeks. His PPM ain't on, you lose mm -hmm. eight of a share. How much of this shit can you really believe anymore? Well, I'll tell you this. Commercial radio all over the country, and uh, Chicago's no exception. And with, Rob, you know, Rob said kids don't listen to radio. I'm like, Rob, I'm inclined to agree with you, bro. Really, they don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't. That's why Lee, the biggest stations, the drive, LS. Uh, and um, the drive LS, LS, and, 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 yeah, we, we're, it's like an '80s rock. You know what it sounds like? Q101 and LS back in the '80s. So oh. here, here's the simple deal: throw on some Don Henley, go get me some Billy Joel, go get me some Phil Collins, throw in Foghead every now and then, just so we can keep you know the rockers happy. Throw in yeah. some Michael Jackson accidentally. Because Triller is a so big it's, album. It's a format for the young grandmothers and grandfathers because those Basically, people are 40, yeah, 50 years old now. Yeah, and, and you know, and you know, we Rob knows this, you know this, I know this, we all know this. I mean, the reason why these older music formats are showing up at the top, you know, V V, I think V hit almost a nine at one point, a nine mm -hmm. share. V103. Yeah. Uh, you know, thanks to Armando setting the station up properly. Armando did a lot of work. He put them in great shape back when he had to. Absolutely. But, but all these stations, uh, the loop, V103, Drive, uh, not the loop, I'm sorry, because they're gone. The drive, um, upper demo stations, because we're the only ones really left listening to radio. Yeah, because kid, we, we still have the habit of yeah. radio. Yeah, the, kid, the kids can go to Spotify. They can go to SoundCloud, MixCloud. They can go on it. The they got the, the playlist on their phone. and Exactly. They don't, they don't, yeah. they don't, they don't use it the same way. Yeah. Plus, radio has to stop playing long-ass stop sets. With all these commercials, six, seven, eight, nine minutes of commercials. Uh. Nobody's going to sit there and listen to that. Well, can you imagine and if I was an advertiser and, and you're in an eight minute stop set and you're going to play my commercial seven minutes in, ain't nobody going to hear my commercial because people, most people have punched out by then. Well, th yeah. And think about this. If you're the seventh, the seventh commercial in that stop set and you're a car dealer 
And the eighth commercial on that stop set is a car dealer. Trust me, I'm going to go find the idiot in trafficking and throw them out the window. Why are you putting my competitor right next to me and charging right. me for that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as a comment about Marco, Marco was a great personality, and he's he's down in Houston. He is was he down still in Magic? Is he still in Magic? No, he was there oh. for, I think, 20 years, and yeah, then yeah. They, they let him go, and had some health issues uh, a couple of years ago. Had a little stroke, but he's he's okay now. I talked to him a couple months ago. Oh, did he? I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, he recovered no, nicely. No, no. And and yeah. Armando's just a, a radio maniac still. Still, still, yeah, he's still. still hey, he's been on a radio for three years, and I would put him up against anybody, anybody, anywhere. anytime, no matter how strong they thought their game was, because he still yep. understands everything he he and he has a passion for it. More importantly. You know, yeah. he still has a passion. I don't love radio the way I used to. I love the internet, but I don't love commercial radio. You know, somebody was asking me, he said, Lee, what would it take for you to come back and program or manage a radio station? I said, uh, it would have to be in the Sun Belt, and you have to put a, <laughs> quite a bit of money on the table, but I couldn't do the coal stuff anymore. I don't want to. Why do I have to do that anymore? Yeah, I don't even, well, I mean, really, do you even want to do what you even want? I, I wouldn't want to be in the game anymore I, because I think the majority of the people at the top of the food chain have no business being there. They're thoroughly unqualified. They're completely yeah. ignorant. They're thoroughly disrespectful. Yeah. They're, they're all there because they're plugged in by a lot of people that know a lot of people who could protect their own circle of idiots and the numbers show it and, and they're weed and eventually they're all going to eat themselves. That's why I've, I've always been comfortable. I have never had to kiss anyone's ass. I have never had to apologize to anybody in that industry for who I am, what I do, what I think, because I've been right. They've been wrong. They can all kiss my ass. And I know you felt the same way a lot about it too. It's just, yeah. Yeah. You, you can't I'm, argue I'm truth and reality. You want to argue fantasy, then you go argue mm -hmm. fantasy. I'm not obligated to take part in that psychosis with people. Yeah. You know, this is the reality, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. And a lot of people had an issue with that. So I didn't have to deal with them, and they don't have to deal with me. It's called an impasse. Good luck. Have a good good life. Move yeah. on and keep going. That's it. Yeah, my position has always been I don't own the station. I'm here to do a job. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. I'm you know, going to be respectful and come in every day and do a, a great job. Now, if that's not good enough for you, and more important, when, when we're sitting in the, in the conference room and we're making major de business decisions about the growth or the possibility of doing something new and different in your, for your radio station and you turn it down and go in a completely different direction and it fails miserably and you spend several million dollars on a failure, don't come back to me and say, well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I did. I told you don't do that. And I gave you all the reasons why and you did it anyway. So suck it up and live with it. That you, that's a decision that you made. And most of those decisions are made at the corporate level of people who don't understand the broadcast business, because in most cases, Never been on the radio themselves. Never came up the 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 uh, road the way most of us did, and they didn't have the passion for it. They started from a bottom line standpoint only, and I certainly understand that. Okay, when I made oh, yeah. the bottom line, yeah, exactly the bottom. You know, people say, "Well, it's all they care about is money." Well, well, exactly. You do have to care about money because. You, otherwise, you can't pay anybody to do shit. You want to come in and work for free? Then tell them not to work, worry about money. But there's no balance. The balance is all out of whack now. That's true. You know, you got to know your value, and and sometimes you got to walk away from a, a situation, which I did in in Chicago. I walked away from WBMX, and a, a week later, I was at, at GCI making thirty, forty thousand dollars more a year, and I left there and doubled my salary going to San Francisco, and I came back to BMX and made two and a half million dollars. And that so, was all an all over five thousand dollars that Egmont didn't want to yeah, pay. Yeah, didn't want. To pay. <laughs> he he had offered he had offered me ninety five thousand dollars prior to that. I was only making seventy five. Now mm. I, mean, I don't have a problem in being very you know public about it. Mm. We were at ninety five thousand. I said Egmont, I need five thousand dollars more. It's general principle with me. I think this job is worth at least a hundred grand plus $25,000 per bo bonus. If I hit the numbers and that's my number, that's what I want. And he says, I can't do it. So I walked away from the contract negotiations, went home. My wife thought I was crazy, but 
Marv Dyson called me, gave me a $35,000, $40,000 more than what I was offered. And I went over there and made GCI number one. Left there, went to KMEL and made 150, 250 or something like that at KMEL. Left there and came back to BMX. A guy that wouldn't give me five grand gave me two and a half million dollars to come back. So yeah, not you got to know your worth. You got to know when to fold and walk away from a bad situation and get people to respect you for what you do. Well, now, yeah. Ubu yeah. the fool and let your ego get in the way. Because I knew what I'd just done, and I knew the value of making that station number one that went from $12 million in billing to $20 million, and all I wanted was $5,000. I didn't think I was asking for too much. And when you, know, when, when you talk about the egos, it's it, again, it's always, first and foremost, don't bullshit yourself. It always goes right. back to not bullshitting yourself. Right. If, if you think that you're the most important thing in the world, but you ain't got nothing to back it up, other than what you think you should have been doing that you didn't do, but yet you think you should be paid yeah. as if you did do it, then you're bullshitting yourself. You, yeah. you, had the, you had the track record already. So five grand, I mean, it was a, it was a Christmas party for the old man, and he couldn't, he didn't want to swing for it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the old man needs to come in once a month and get a, get, uh, get a paycheck for himself that was more than five grand. So it, just, it was nothing. It was it, peanuts. You know, when we were talking about Megzainet and, um, Tracy, dear friend of mine, uh, who's watching. Yeah, we got. I, I, yeah, I had her do a uh, Megs. Actually, I've got that air check. I've got a couple air checks from when we were doing uh, the show on CKG on one hundred five point nine when it was still at uh, it was still. Mm -hmm. That's when those brothers came in to CBS and just the, they had Mister Haney. What's his name? What, who was the guy who used to call Mister Haney at CBS? Uh, Mel Carmazan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Selling broken toasters to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him and uh, the, the Hollander brothers, they came in yeah. to CBS, destroy, destroyed CBS radio like in record time. Lusty. And uh, we were on at that time over at CKG, and uh, Tracy did some of the voices. And I also had her, uh, you know, you remember the song Lick It, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, Lick it. There, there was short dick man. You know, I, I, I had business dealings with Frank and uh, Frank Rodrigo and in night and jamming down JD. God, what a wonderful guy. J, JD was with me through all the good, all the bad. And um, lick it starts getting hot again. And I want to say 98. And I got nobody to play Rula because all the shit that happened. For the that's a whole story that I, I'm just not going to talk about. But <laughs> we start getting calls that they need their booking that lick it is all over the radio in New York. I'm like, what is going on? It's five years old. Yeah. The shows the song get and Tracy. I, I, I wanted to get Tracy. Tracy went and did the Rula. I think Tracy did it. Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I had you do it because I, I had to hurry up. We had to snap and put a show together mm -hmm. because there were like seven, eight shows booked out there. And then we, and it was, it was just the well, latter. That song came out at a time when it, it was edgy and, and then radio wasn't quite ready for it to be massive, massive appeal. But five years later, <laughs> you know, radio had uh, kind of matured more. Yeah, but only in New York, Lee. <laughs> only but in New yeah. York. But it, it was probably different programmers and management and ownership in New York by five years later. Yeah, it was KTU, actually, yeah. of all stations. Yeah. KTU j jumped on a record five years later. It'd be, it's as crazy as somebody started playing the electric slide by Marsha Griffith. You go, hey, that's a new song. You got to, it's like, no, yeah. man. You know, that was a song, The Electric Slide. Here, I don't know if you remember. We got that rec that song serviced to us in the record pools. God, it had to be about 89. The record went nowhere, Lee. Did nothing. Hmm. I used it as a happy hour record. And um, when I was at Safari Club out in Schaumburg. <clears throat> and um, then, like, 10 years later, it's like the hottest thing in the world. You can't, everybody's doing this line dance at weddings. To the electric slide, and I'm thinking myself, wait a minute, that song's from like 12 years ago. You know, <laughs> what happened? What did I? It's, did I go to the joint and just get locked, not let yeah. out? And now all of a sudden, it's this. I never understood how that happened. 
how it, it took a little while for it to have that um, street level acceptance and and but and it didn't need radio for that type of growth. No, exactly, because radio had nothing to do with it. Right? Yeah, radio had no. nothing to do with it. Yeah, it's so, kind of so like uh, house music and or um, stepper music. Oh, the steppers are every bit as fierce as them house heads, boy. Them steppers take their shit serious, my boy. You know, you mess up with a stepper. It's like, you know, if you go, you know, like when you call bingo and you're at a bingo hall and there's nothing but older people and you call bingo and you ain't got bingo, you're dead. Go ahead and mess with a stepper in the middle of their step and you're dead. It's over. Be no chips all night. I'll mess you up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever call bingo if you ain't got it. That's right. Uh, so here on the BMX crowd, I don't know if you can see the screen, like every day we do the hot lunch mix. Mm -hmm. So we find a different mix and, you know, throw that up there. Nick, And it, it's great, man. It's nice to be able to see that people do remember this stuff. And it's not just a bunch of DJs. A little bit of jazz. Yeah. It's, to me, it's like how much does, do, the, do, do people remember? Not yeah. just because DJs remember this stuff. Some guys have a better memory than others. Mario Luna's got this great book with all these great, great flyers. Remember the flyers back in the day? Probably oh, used to the flyers, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, never, no, nobody knew how to spell back then either. Everything <laughs> spelled wrong. <laughs> how about DJ Saved My Life? Uh, indeed. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, we got the video. I've got the video on here. It's It was a couple of weeks ago they posted the video. They're Kenny and Fast Daddy. You know, you get these songs. Mm -hmm. And then you get some of the, you get the post, you get this and fast daddy. And there's a video from Mr. Lee. Most people don't know. There was a, that he actually did videos. He, he shot videos and even Rocky at DG international. I mean, they did shoot some videos, mm -hmm. you know, he shot some video. And then when forever more got picked up, uh, Atlantic picked up desires record, Troy's record. There was a video for that too. So they were starting to get into the videos mm -hmm. when you, there's a video for Jack, your body, but it's not the real video. You know, it's not Steve's video. It's just, yeah, somebody did a really cool job on, I don't know who did it. Is it right here? Yeah, right there. I mean, it's cute. You know, old video. Took some old dancing footage. Mm -hmm. Nice timing. Yeah. Yeah, jitterbugging. We don't call it Jack and we're jitterbugging. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, man. Uh, and some I, of the moves that they used to do back in the jitterbug days. Yeah, the old juke joints, right? Come back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was a funky, I was a funky white boy. You know that. I knew I was yeah. I was in the, I was in the weirdest places, boy. You were, you were <laughs> funky than the mosquitoes tweeter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. So yeah, I mean the group, the WBMX group, <laughs> it's on uh, Facebook and it's on a couple other things. Um, oh, thanks, Todd. Ooh, Todd, Todd. Little information about uh, Top of the Pops. God, I haven't seen yeah. Steve in a couple of years, but man, what a another see. And there was the beauty about a lot of there were a lot of really talented guys who were musicians or come from uh, musically inclined families like Steve. You know, and another guy from 20 Fingers, J.J. Flores. J.J.'s really talented guy. Um, and then there were guys who had no musical experience but went in the studio and created some great records, you know. When it was the house, as far as the house was concerned, it was about creating music for us to spin that had intros and outros in the club because mm – -hmm. A lot of shit, you know, even back in 80, 81, when you started running the mixes, even before the Hot Mix 5 and you were just running the mixes, mm -hmm. a lot of that shit wasn't the easiest stuff to mix. I mean, Secret Weapon, mm -hmm. AMFM, You Are the One, Xavier worked that sucker to death. You know, all that stuff was real drummers. Yeah. None of them, none of them could keep a syn syncopated beat. Yeah, exactly. So it, it was, you know, Heaven and Earth, I Really Love You, another great record, right? Confunction got to be enough. Even the Barcase stuff, even, you know, Hit and Run. And a lot of that stuff wasn't easy to work with. No, no, it wasn't built to mix in and out of. No, it really wasn't. You almost had to slam them. Yeah, until they, until about 82. Then the R&B yeah. started getting with the intros. Like yeah. they, they did that eight minute version of she talks to me with her body. 
Yeah. Um, my I started hiring guys that are who are mixed DJs to do remixes, and that's what kind of yeah, yeah. changed the game. Yeah, because the disco, the disco, you know, the disco stuff had intros, had breaks, mm -hmm. but a lot of the problem even back then is again, if you got a thirteen minute version of a record, the drummer, you know, he's half drunk seven minutes through the song, he can't keep the beat. Exactly. Celebra yeah. Celebration was the one example. It started about 118, went to 124, came back down to 115 BPMs. He was all over the place. Yeah, there was man. No they were partying. I, oh, I hated that song. Oh, what well, you know? Here's it. I was you mean, working. You mean the 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 uh, the white boy? The uh, white national, national anthem. anthem. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> I, every wedding, I, I would purposely, I, I stopped <laughs> doing weddings because of that song. I know. Stopped. I, I refuse to do any more weddings because I, I actually did mobiles. <laughs> we were doing mobiles in 80, 81, 82. I, got, mm. I was thorough, totally against labor, first off. Totally against labor. And there was too much labor involved in that. Yeah. And, I, and the people didn't want, I, I believe if you do labor, you should be paid an exorbitant sum of money. And people <laughs> didn't want to pay that. So yeah. I wasn't willing to do it. However, and it's amazing, man. I remember the first, well, they were called sock hops back in my day. Yeah, yeah, way back in your day. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, I mean, if you got, you, you had electricity and everything, right? <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> sundial. <laughs> Keep track of the time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, if you got ten or fifteen dollars back in those days, that was a lot of money. And if you were on the radio, you might you might have gotten twenty or twenty five. Mm. But nowadays, you know, guys like. Um, some of these guys from, especially from Europe, um, you know, the EDM guys, these guys are making a grip of money. Well, they, well, they, used to they were, the, yeah, they the, were. The virus yeah. hit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when, when it comes back, they'll, they'll be in good shape. They'll start making big money again. Yeah. I, you know, Calvin nothing. Harris, you know, you know uh, yeah, but don't forget Calvin's also a producer. Yeah, yeah. So he's getting a lot of his dough from his hit records from the spirit. But he still he can still uh, well he was until the COVID hit. He was getting three hundred thousand or more here in Vegas. Oh, for one, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out in Vegas. An hour and a half, two hours worth of work. And it comes yeah. in with a thumb drive and plugs it in and fakes it. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It, okay. it, it's it's depressing. It is. Because I remember, you know, me working for uh let's see, when I started at the ambassador, my check I think was $13 after taxes in 78 <laughs> and Steve Hurley, when Steve was working, I would go down the block, go see Steve at high rollers. Yeah. I think Steve was making about $33 a night in 86. Is it 86? Yeah. 86, 87. What, what do you think I was making in, uh, in the sixties as a radio DJ in, in Virginia, Norfolk, uh, 10 bucks a shift. Not that much buck 60 an hour. Yeah, but did you get free toilet use? Did you have indoor? Do you had indoor plumbing, right? Yeah, yeah, we had well, indoor. There, well, there. See, if, <laughs> if, you, if, if you wanted more money, they would have made but you go pee you out, to, out you, the wood. You had to still buy your own cokes out of the machine and stuff like that. So <laughs> there was no, there was no uh, extra stuff. So you didn't get about any sixty an hour. Get, really? Yeah, that's what about, I, that was about, minimum wage. Yeah, well, yeah, minimum wage. I think yeah, it was not a union shop. It was you know local radio station there in Norfolk. Yeah, I was. I think minimum wage not when I first two thirty five an hour was minimum wage for me when uh one of the few minimum wage jobs I had was two thirty five an hour. So yeah, it's changed a lot, but it's, it hasn't gotten well. You know, I think pay in radio kind of peaked in the eighties. For most people, there have been some exceptions to the rule. You know, the guys that went into syndication, they made millions of dollars. And Tom. Yeah. yeah, Tom joined it. Tom crushed it. I mean, he did very well. But he was, a, he was a sharp businessman. And I would say Tom's real asset was his understanding of the, the true art of the deal. He knew how to put a deal together, you know. And uh, so he, he wasn't afraid to ask for a lot of money. And he was in a position to demand and command that kind of money. And he did really well. I mean, Tom retired now and so um, you see what I got on the screen. I hope he saved a lot of that money. Oh my God. There's some history. <laughs> right there. Yeah. I remember that show. Yeah. That was uh Deborah was her name? Deborah uh CBS. It was Common Ground. Yeah, Common, Common Ground. Ground the host was um Renee Ferguson. There you go. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'd like so, to I'd like to get a copy of the full version of that because that that was yeah that was only about what is that five minutes long? Yeah, it's about a five minute. Here you go. Yeah. Boy, we all had hair. <laughs> hey, Lee Mike is looking like a pimp. <laughs> Three look, piece suit. Look at that that Catholic Sunglasses. school. Look at that Catholic school tie. Yes. <laughs> you know they. Yeah, look at Tom. Look at the expression on Tom. It's like I know. Talk about I, I, I hate it. You know, ties are not for guys with two chins. <laughs> they're, they're just not. I never liked a tie. Never. Oh God. Yeah, look at this. This is great stuff. <laughs> now where is Bobby? Hang on. That's Bobby OJ. Yeah. He's still in Memphis. Is he really? Yeah. No yeah. Kidding. Wow. Yeah. WDIA. Big AM fifty thousand water down in Memphis. There you go. He had flip flops on. Who Bob did? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. see, you know, us Italians, we had a, we we had a word for people like, and we used to call them guys like that who bots nuts. <laughs> guys nuts. You don't want to be. You don't want to be in the same room. You don't want to be in a room with this guy by yourself. Yeah, He's not all there, but my God, he was funny in the mornings. Yeah, and, he was a character. He really was. And you know what? I mean, really, when you think about back in the day, when you had, I mean, you had a great air staff. You had Veronique. You had Marco. Uh, and then they had people bouncing in and out and in and out. And, um, but I mean, the core, Marco and Veronique, and then Doug in the mornings. Yeah. And GCI had a great area. I mean, that's what you had to compare. I mean, GCI had Evan Luck, Barbara Stanek, yeah. Bob Wall. I mean, and then I don't know where they come in and they bring Tom, uh, Tom Joyner in doing the afternoons, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like you say, I think we were, I don't know, Lee, I think we were able to be more intelligent and grasp more back then because the pace of life today is so accelerated. Our <clears throat> life, our life today is everything is so accelerated. Yvonne Daniels. Yeah. Rob mentions Yvonne Daniels. God love her. Yeah. Uh, but I think our, our, our pace of life is so accelerated. I don't, you know, it's great. I, you know how I am. I don't live in the past, but I cherish it, you know, yeah, you have respect for it because yeah. it, was, it was great, great stuff, great talent, people, and, real radio people back yeah. in there. And I just don't know I if we're sorry. equipped. I, yeah, I don't know if we're equipped uh, because of how we've been conditioned, programmed uh, to live our lives today. If any of that could ever work again, it, it just, I, I just don't think it will. And it's I a don't shame. Think so either in in the in the AM FM mode, right. If it, going right. to happen it will happen on the internet or some podcast. other form of delivery yeah podcast. Or podcast. yeah but it, it it's not going to happen as long as the ownership of broadcast is the way it is today and and i'm i'm going to guess and, and project that in the next 5 to 10 years most of the owners that are in ownership now won't be what will radio look like then don't know because I mean, what you have to have a starting point. So if iHeart goes out, you know, the, all the principals in that sell out or whatever, or go bankrupt again, what's going to replace that? Well, and what's, gonna, and what's the value of it? What's the value of those? Well, that too. But who who can afford to come in and take over nine hundred radio stations and make it work? Because there's so much bad will and there's so many people who have left the medium and gone somewhere else. Is it possible to regenerate, rebuild, remodel radio as we knew it? Or should it ever go back? Or should it be just a part of the past, the history of radio once was? I think you have great memories of it and you move on from there as yeah, you know, yeah, you know what? Yeah, radio, radio will have its its point, its place, but uh, you know, a lot of the problem is, like we said twenty years ago, why are you spending so much money on this thing? Yeah, a <laughs> hundred. Remember, yeah. you know, back in my early days of radio and before I got in radio, I was a huge fan of air personalities. Growing up in Virginia, 
I listen to WCFL, WLS, BBM, WABC in New York, WKBW out of Buffalo. Um, what was those it? are all big 50,000 watt blow torches. Right. I couldn't wait to sundown. So these stations would start coming in, and by 9 o'clock at night, they were like local stations. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up on that kind of talent. And that was my inspiration. And, and, what that was, I, and that was our entertainment. That was, I mean, that was well, every bit as entertaining as putting on a TV because they were entertaining. Yeah. And I never dreamed of ever having the opportunity to work in Chicago and New York. You know, as a kid, I mean, as you, that's just like heaven. I mean, that's just beyond your wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. And and then when I got um, out west and I heard West Coast radio. I was like, wow. And then I got a chance to work in San Francisco three or four times in LA three or four times and working with some of the great talent out there. It was an honor, first of all, and just an amazing trip to have those opportunities. But today, a young person coming out of broadcast school or media class in a serious college or whatever, it's going to be tough, man. Not going to be. It is tough to find a job as a young person in this business. Well, there's because only so many jobs you're going to be that are going to be available to you. That's the point. You know, the syndication has taken up all the jobs, and then you know, voice tracking now has taken over. You mm -hmm. you you have a job at a radio station, but you're responsible for voice tracking another five or ten radio stations after you get off the air every day. Yeah, and they, and they'll pay you with two Twinkies, a ho ho, and a ding dong. That's about it. And you'll be thankful to, to to have that job because there's nowhere else for you to go. Yeah, and that's like if you remember twenty something years ago, what did I say? This is where it's at. Everything yeah. is going to wind up here because that's the natural progression of how humans work. We progress, we move forward, we don't go backwards. We mm -hmm. progress. The mm -hmm. internet was the only, and the next progression is the matrix. That last final projection when you and I are gone is going to be, oh, so you are completely useless. You have no talent, and you wish to be a porn star with a 27-inch schlong. Plug it in, and there you go. Now you're plugged into the computer. You have no life to live other than what the computer generates in your head. That's, I know it sounds nuts, but give me 2020, 2050, 2055, we'll be there. Wow. They'll be there. They will plug people in the machines and you'll be able to live whatever kind of life you think you want to live, whatever you think is wonderful, whatever you think is great. If you can't achieve it, living life the way it's going, they'll be able to plug a program into your head and that'll be it. Wow. That's the next that's, move. That's scary. It scares I, I the shit out of me. That shit. Damn right. It scares the shit yeah. out of me because they're going to force people into that kind of nonsense because of the opportunities that are drying up. Take and a lot of yeah, it's about, and a lot, look, it's a double-edged sword. We've said this forever. This is a double-edged sword that we operate yeah. in. Uh, Just because you can, because the technology lends right. itself to it, doesn't mean that's what you should do. I love technology. I'm thankful for indoor plumbing. I'm glad I don't have to go take a piss in the middle of the street at three in the morning. Thank you, technology. Air yeah. conditioning is the greatest invention for any fat or skinny man ever known to man. Air conditioning is great. <laughs> I love the fact that I have a refrigerator that I don't need Barney Rubble dropping off a big rock of ice to put in my ice box. Technology is wonderful, but it's a double-edged sword, too. Because people can bastardize it. And once it gets bastardized, it does a lot of damage. I was just looking around me here. I've got six computers in this studio. Yeah. I've got three monitors. I've got three cameras. No, oh, seven computers. I forgot the little little cube here on, on the desk. I've got a couple of nice speakers. You got a you have a cube? The little the little cubes? Yeah, the little little squared thing. It's a it's a Windows uh, Mini. No kid! Wow, yeah. remember those? What were they called? Cobalts. The Cobalt servers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, this is the, this is a Windows version of the old. I had a Cobalt. Yeah, I remember yeah. it was a little it was a pretty little right out of Star Trek. It was cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unix uh, box. Yeah, Unix. That's right. Yeah. I got a key light. I got a big twenty inch ring light. I've got. Um, where is it? It's uh, to put it back in the box. I got a, a one, two, three, four, five microphones. Mm -hmm. All of this is in my my own little personal studio. Yeah, and there are guys like this all over the world that have access to this kind of technology. I got a, a video switcher. 
I got a, a, a this is my newest toy. I don't know if you can see this. What'd you got? It, this is a oh, black magic oh, yeah. video. It's called a, a fast uh, speed editor. So you know, for, guys you know, like guys like me and you, I get really excited about that. <laughs> it's kind of hot, man. Sick. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's sexy. <laughs> so you know, I, I but that's that's what I enjoy. You know, and at this point in time in my life, I'm knock on wood, lucky enough <laughs> to, to to be able to do it now. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of people won't have the opportunities that I had, and a chance to to work in. Uh, let's see, I worked in New York. L.A., Chicago, San Francisco, Houston, uh, um, Charlotte, Norfolk. What am I missing? I'm missing St. Louis. And then I consulted in about another 20 markets. And, I mean, I, I, not many people are going to have that opportunity and made a few million dollars doing it. Yeah, and I don't know if they'll even know what they missed, Lee. No. I don't even know if they'll ever know that they missed it because it's not being told to them that they have missed it. Yeah. Well, the opportunity isn't there. And I was hoping that when I broke the ceiling and for the first um, program director, let alone African-American, to make $2.5 million on a contract mm -hmm. was earth-shattering, groundbreaking. And my hope was it would open up the door for others to follow. But I would bet you. That was the peak. That, and that's sad. But I would bet you are the vice president of any of these companies that's over 100 uh, stations or 200 stations is not making a half a million dollars a year. And there are people, you know, Armando, I was just talking to Armando about this uh, you know, a couple of days ago. And what you just said about what some of these guys in radio are making and the the higher ups who are the supposed geniuses making six, seven, eight hundred grand a year, making them I mean, they don't even bother to flush the toilet anymore. They take such a big they drop such a big bomb on everything, make mm -hmm. such a big they don't even have to flush the toilet because they're covered. Mm -hmm. They're protected by the other idiots that are dumber than them surrounding them, making a million a year. Yeah. So yeah, I I it's it's there's a lot of I'm, problems I'm, and I'm this, so right, this is why it's good where we're at lee this yeah. is good where we're at on the internet I ain't you ain't got an answer to nobody i ain't got an answer to nobody somebody wants to contract me for a job more than happy to do it i ain't got no problem i got 40 different balls in the air always have just like you some work some don't but for the most part mm -hmm. we ain't owned i ain't yeah, owned by exactly. nobody exactly yeah so I, I'm happy with, with where I am. I'm just ha uh, not happy about the opportunities for others that, that are following me. And, and those footsteps are, you know, in the snow, but they, they can't go behind me in those footsteps because the trail has been cut off. But I think if you, they can do it online. It's just, yeah. but that, that, that's all, you know, again, like you and I've discovered, oh yeah, we can reach billions of people. Guess what? Hundreds of millions of people are now trying to reach billions of people. So it's relative. You and know? And, you know, there's a guy on YouTube called, um, Mr. Beast. Mm -hmm. This guy is making crazy money. Um, you, you go to YouTube and, and put that name in and tell me how many, how many subscribers he has. This guy gives away, he had a contest. He gave away 40 cars to one person. Is he related to Oprah? <laughs> no, he's bigger than Oprah. Wow. <laughs> she, she, really? Well, she, the, uh, yeah. well, she, she's gained weight and lost weight a lot. I mean, we talk. Well, about yeah, but I'm talking about the purse now. Okay. Right. He may not be a billionaire because he's giving away a lot of stuff. Yeah, you Is got it. it. Fifty three and a half million. That's right. Oh and he does God. these crazy, you know, like contests online, and he gives look away at, crazy look money. At that, Lee, look at that. Yeah, forty million views in one month. He has videos that has over twenty million views to it in a week. This crazy stuff. So, what does, he, does he do weird shit to himself? Or he's not? Is he no, just no. okay? I don't, I don't you never know but he does crazy stuff you know he he uh he did so he pulled a prank on his brother 
and he filled his brother's house up with this slime foam stuff. And the whole house is this. When the guy came home from work or whatever, he opens the door and this, he can't walk in the house because it's filled with this foam. Uh -huh. and, and so he buys him a new house. <laughs> he, he trashes cars and buy the per person a new car. He just does crazy stuff. But the people, he gets crazy views, which he makes all this money monetizing all the stuff mm -hmm. that he does. And look at all the subs he's got. Yeah. Oh, this guy and I need to, well, he needs to be a friend of mine. I can, <laughs> right. I can I teach him. I might him to just, just maybe uh, share one of my videos. He could just call me an asshole and I'll be good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I mean, this, go go check him out. I mean, it's just, it's just nuts. But is he like a comedian? No. Is he a singer? No. Is he a, a, a great radio program or anything like no? What he is is very creative and come up with these crazy nutball ideas that get people to watch his videos. Yeah. So he's a great um, creator of ideas he and good marketing. content. Good content. Content. Yeah. yeah. So and he doesn't need anybody to do it for him. No. And he's got a crew of uh, his little cronies and they do they come up with these crazy ideas and they do this stuff. And it, it, it's it, it's oh, scary. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, go ahead. It's scary what he what he pulls off, you know. Well, let's watch one for fun here. Okay. Let's just sure. watch one here. Skip the ads. Yeah, turn up the volume. Yeah, starting off with two PlayStation. Yeah. What else do you want? This is a good item right here. Hell, go in and buy everything in the store and give it away. Okay. Before I get more stuff, I'm gonna see how this fits in the circle. Oh, you're stacking them vertical. So let it touch the red tape. Oh, so he's doing some kind of contest here. As long as it's inside the circle, you can keep it. Really? Yeah. 3,700 dollars worth of stuff for free. Here you go, little man. Thank you. This is Tyler, and Tyler, anything you fit in this circle, I'll pay for. It looks like a rectangle. That's the table. Oh, is there a circle in here? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. This is a 280 dollar anime statue doll. Appreciate it. But I have my eye on that. Right when I came in here, I wanted to get this. Ooh, okay. How big is the circle? I mean, I don't know. Tyler, do you want more stuff, or is this all you want? Okay, I'm not done. And I saw this in the last Mr. Beast video. Do you really <laughs> do you think it's in that circle? There is no way this fits in that square. I'm just going to be honest. He's lost. This is a pretty shield. I want to get it. I think I'm pretty satisfied. This is a lot of stuff. This is probably like $10,000. Uh, I'm going to call it quits, for real. Let's get everything off the table and reveal to him his circle. I'm actually nervous Are now. You ready <laughs> I wasn't see? nervous before. Probably a little tiny circle. <laughs> The square. It's <laughs> got...
And but you know what? It just reminds you of yeah, years no, ago. Go. Well, can you go back to that video? Oh yeah, hang on, hang on. I just want to see how many views it had. Oh, it was ninety-three million. Ninety-three million. Okay. Yeah. So if he was getting ten dollars per thousand, what does that come to? Uh, it's ten ten percent, nine hundred thirty thousand. <clears throat> <laughs> One video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I can't you, believe you feel I'm, like a fool now. You've been working too hard, right? Yeah, but I don't understand. I I would never watch it. <laughs> but but ninety one million people did. And, and you know what? That is where you have to be able to step outside of yourself and say it's not just like when you program. I hate this stupid song, but people love it. I got to exactly. have it in there. It's not exactly. about me. Not about no. me. No, he's got to know what people want to see or hear or view and be associated with and it's come up with be on the edge that now some cutting edge shit i mean is i mean really come on i don't think i think i just god to me it's regressing back to what the stupid shit you did when you were a kid and well, nobody part of it. But, but i'm saying it you're looking at it now it's like damn i did stupid shit like that when i was a kid why didn't i think the yeah. film it now yeah it, Again, you know, go find the one when you get a chance. It's the simplest thing in the world. It really yeah. is. But he Wait. thought of it. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a, and you know what? There's a there's a few other guys out there bigger than he is. But Mr. Beast really? is a beast. Yeah. So this but, guy. So you're saying he needs us, right? We got. He needs to talk to us. We, we gotta, need him. <laughs> 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 to be clear. Hey, pal. Yeah. Let me tell you something. We need to. You need to talk to us. <laughs> right. Real bad. Let's see. Yeah. Young Beast. guy. I, I, I bet he's maybe 30. Good for him, man. Yeah. That's what I say. God bless him. Yeah. So here's a bunch of them. Yeah. Wow. So if you're all depressed and, and don't know what to do next and your rent isn't paid and your car is about to get repossessed, get creative. Come up with some creative ideas and do it on the internet and make yourself some money. Well, you've always got to count on yourself. You don't come overnight, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. Look, we've been working at it for how long, right? Half of my life, seems like. Yeah. Well, probably more, really, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you got to reinvent yourself and come up with something creative. I, I, I've always said, if I take on a new radio station, you find out what's broken and you fix that first. Then you say, okay, let me do something that's going to cause a big splash and make people listen to my station versus the other 50 some stations in that market. Mm -hmm. So you have to do something to stand out above the crowd. You can't just play the same damn records that the other the competition is playing. That's what was happening with BMX and GCI. We were going neck and neck, and they were always, you know, a point or two ahead of me. And so when I made the change and started doing stuff that they wouldn't do or hadn't done and nobody else in the market was doing, and it happened to be good, that was the difference. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also why we both did what we did when it came to the Internet stuff was um, go where nobody else is going. Yeah. So we were we were able to create this entire alternative parallel universe that nobody even conceived. Mm -hmm. um, multiple channels, you know. When I was when I had addicted to radio, I was programming fifty two channels. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Were and not only that. Remember when I told you about Hulu? I said, dude, there's this company called Hulu. Right. I'm working with them. I'm putting TV shows because I wanted to diversify the offerings on the yeah. network. That's we right. had. I had everything from left-wing talk to right-wing talk to center talk to TV shows to movies, and that was about 2008 when Hulu was just starting to get its feet wet. Yeah, you yeah. know, it was just coming in. And and again, you you, you you create things and you offer things that are either not there as plain as day that they should be there and they're not there, right. or and then you you know then you come across just weird shit that's like wow okay people dig it you don't know why yeah. but but they made it don't but, question it do it yeah isn't that what you told elroy once about the mixes when elroy yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were up in uh 
Milwaukee. It was a music concert up there, and he was backstage, and I was there. I was there with a, an artist that I was uh, managing, a rapper by the name of Domino. Yeah, and, he had, uh, it was a ghetto jam, right? And come on, yeah, man. and um, um, Long Beach, what was it? Long Beach Funk or something. The same, the same tune that um, Jamaica Funk. Oh, Tom Brown. Yeah. yeah. But um, uh, Sweet Potato Pie was his big one. That's right, yeah. Oh, my, my, Sweet Potato Pie. Yeah, well, you know, actually, what's his, I mean, ghetto, the, the ghetto jam was hot. The ghetto stuff. jam was, yeah. Yeah, I think that was after Sweet Potato. Yeah. Uh, so we were up there at the concert backstage, and he came up to me and says, Lee, man, Lee, let me ask you a question. He says, what's with this Hot Mix 5 thing? Is, is it really that big? I said, Elroy, don't think about it. Don't question it. If you have an opportunity to put those guys back on the air, just do it and just watch what happens. So let them do their thing and watch what happens. He goes, really? Really? It's, it, it, it's, it's that big? I said, Elroy, trust me when I tell you, just do it. And I think he put Farley on, but he didn't bring, bring all the guys back. But well, it could have been for various reasons yeah. too. They could have been arguing each other, or who knows? Yeah. yeah, it could have been any number of things. They may not have been interested. The money might not have been right. 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 Who knows? But I, I just he he didn't understand it, and a lot of people outside of Chicago didn't understand it. But I took the same concept to San Francisco and put it on a top forty station, and it blew up. Went to number one in one rating period. When I left that station, they were the number one music station in San Francisco in four months. Well, you know, even in, um, I was flying back and forth from Chicago to Arizona. Um, and I worked a, a couple clubs on there and I did a couple mixes for KZZP and Dave Rash, but Dave was a very dear friend. Mm -hmm. Dave was down there and Dave created him and, uh, Andy Starr created, uh, hot mix productions, which was, um, they, they were syndicated across. B96 used to run their lunch mixes in the 90s. Give you an idea, they were on about 150 stations. And uh, even then, in the, I want to say 84, 85, 86, well, 85, 86, um, mixes were like the number one thing, even in, in Arizona, KZZP. And Dave was from here in Chicago. And then when Dave got out of, was it the Navy or the Air Force, he, he stayed down in Arizona. And Guy Zapolian was a PD down there at that time at ZZP. So it was weird when you get to Arizona, while some of the house wasn't hot, songs like Midas Touch, Wet My Whistle, No Parking on a Dance Floor, but then even other things like Hypnotic Tango were hot records. I, we were able to make them hot records down there, but the house really didn't hit to the latter part of the 80s. But mixes right. were an important part of the programming. And as you went across the country in the later 80s, I mean, even down in, you know, you had Power 96 in Miami, Power 106 in L.A., uh, mm -hmm. all through the you know, late 80s, all the way in the end, 90s with DJ, uh, DJ Rennie or whatever his name was. I forgot that what his name was. Uh, but the mixes really became an important part of programming for every Absolutely. radio station. And I never understood why more radio stations didn't run with it as early as they should have because they worked. And so why would you be in denial? Even if you don't like that concept? Well, the that was the problem. They didn't like the concept. And, and especially when it came to some of the top 40 stations, these guys were square head, top 40 maniacs. Oh, and they didn't, God, the worst. Yeah, they, they didn't, they didn't want to know it. You know, they were not cool programmers. These guys probably didn't hang out in clubs. They hang out in bars, you know, but they, didn't, they were not hip programmers. They didn't. No. They, understand the value of the clubs and the streets well they hung out with each other and patted each other on the back remember i used to say that hey you're great hey i'm great yes i'm great you know i'm yeah. great too yes i'm great but we're all great aren't we great you're great i'm great they, they yeah. were all they couldn't stop humping each other's legs and they were all morons right exactly oh but th that's the way it was All right, you got it. You got. You got to get rolling. Let Let's plug your what you're doing, Lee. Lee Michaels with me for those of you joining us. Uh, Lee, I'm doing two things right now. Um, under the banner of I Radio Coach, I have a consulting company. I consult online broadcasters, 
people who want to start a radio station or whether it's talk or music, it doesn't matter. Um, I help them get set up. I show them the help them set up the software uh, and get connected with the various um, outlets that they need, be, need to be associated with. Uh, and then I started another talk network called Street News Now, and I'm looking for reporters, uh, street reporters to, to phone in reports from all over the country. So go to streetnewsnow.com, and there's a sign-up form. You can sign up and if you want to be a reporter. So people who are in college and you want to get into media, here's an opportunity. Well, you're getting real world, real, real world. world experience. Yeah, not through some book from somebody charging you twenty exactly. grand to go work for eight dollars an hour. Right. Right, and you don't need a camera crew because if you got a cell phone, that's all you really need now. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You know? I, I don't get the whole idea be, behind broadcasting school anymore. I don't. Go make your own. Go make your own uh, reality now. You don't need somebody to teach you. These kids know how to use Adobe at ten years old, twelve years old, as it is now. Anyways, it's true. Yeah, there's so many different software packages that you can use to edit your audio, your yeah. video, and, and it's simple. Listen, even at my age, I'm teaching myself how to use all of the Adobe products, that whole suite of 20 different apps. I'm teaching myself how to use um, Blackmagic uh, Resolve. And, and, and any of the latest video and, and audio editing tools, I'm using those. And not only that, Lee, then you got to stay hip to all the, think of all the social networks we balance to get our content out there. That's right. That's you right. Know? I stream out to all of them. Yeah. So it, it used to be when you were in broadcasting and when I went to broadcasting school and I grad, graduated broadcasting school in 84, you needed a license. You had to speak properly. If you didn't, there was no such word as fur. It was for, there was no these, those, and this, it was this, that you had to enunciate. And if you didn't, you didn't get on the air. Now you can, you can talk like me. It's like people say to me, you have an accent. I'm like, hey, shut up. You got an accent. Who are you talking to? I got an accent. You know? Yeah, I do. So what? That's yeah, right. Okay. You're from the South. Do I say you sound like that? You know, okay. Leave me alone the way I talk. But you right. couldn't speak like that. And like when you and I, when we would have to go have business meetings with people back in the day, and I had to speak, I had to sit there and be very proper and enunciate <laughs> and speak and talk like I was in broadcasting school. And then I would break out the really big words <laughs> if I wanted to really impress. I, you know, I had like 35 words memorized in my head that I wanted to use. <laughs> Because I didn't know what the hell they were. It's like, where's my sister? Yeah. But yeah, so back then you had to know how to speak. Today it's just, yeah. it's very common speak. It's whatever you sound like, you sound like, because it's more of a visual meeting. Meaning mm -hmm. uh, the visual is what grabs the user today. What right. you're saying is secondary to what they're seeing. That's true. Today. So it's in reverse. Yeah. Versus the old days, 10, ten years yeah. ago. <laughs> Yeah, so, you have to adapt and change with the times, and 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 that's what I'm doing. You know, I, I'm not sitting here trying to figure out how to fix a, a broken radio station in Mobile, Alabama, <laughs> or New York City. Uh, I I want to be on the cutting edge. I, I was always ahead of every, everybody else that was in radio, doing stuff that nobody else was doing. So why should I change? So what I want to do is to take my energy, knowledge, and experience. And give that to people who have a desire to want to do what we've done, mm -hmm. but help them do it in the new world of the internet. Yeah. And from here, the internet is going to go into the Hulus and all of the streaming type networks, and they're desperately looking for content. So, Mr. Beast and guys like that, that those are contests that could be on a network like that. And again, make even more money. But if he's making a you know few million dollars a month, what does he need to do a network deal? Well, see, and and here's again, here's the beauty. Here's the beauty of that, and this is where you get the idiots. When when I think back to the idiots running radio yeah. back in the, you got a guy who's making all this dough already. He's doing it on his own. They're gonna look at that. Goes, hey, we want to give you fifty million dollars to produce that for us here. Yeah. Okay. But he's going to same. No, it won't. It's limited. If he said, 
Give me the $50 million. I'll take my ideas and bring them to your network. Uh, first of all, I want to keep ownership of it and I need to keep it the way it is because that's what brought me to you. Right. Now, if I got to take my product, my concept, my creativity and put it into your world. It's not going to work because it'll but be, they, but they might not care. See, that's the thing. They just like with Yahoo, they didn't give a shit that they were buying Mark Cuban's hedgehog, that 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 hunk of shit that they bought from him. They didn't care. They well, just wanted, that's good for the that's would be good for the guy that they're buying, but right. But it's a stupid decision if you're supposed to be a uh, if you're supposed to be running a company, you're making all this money because you're supposed to be the best at what you do, and you make a decision like that, you should be roasted on an open fire. And never ever have another dollar bill made given to you. But, and that's what they'll wind up doing with this guy. They'll give him 50, 60 million dollars. It won't go anywhere, but he's made 50 million. God bless him. <laughs> yeah, he's making that kind of money now. But see, here's the thing if these networks were so damn smart, they would have been creating that kind of stuff and they're not. Exactly. So, just like in the record business, just like in the radio business, like yeah. in probably every other business, there's a bunch of followers and no leaders. There's no cutting edge creativity in that corporate level. No, not, up, not at that level. Right. Around saying, what can we steal? Who can we buy? Uh, because it, it's easy to do it that way. No, it's not. You're making a mistake. Reach down into your gut and come up with some creativity. Create something that you own. Well, and then you on to something. Yeah, but see, it goes to the fact that, again, remember we said earlier, I taught, mentioned earlier, I don't even know if there's people at the top capable of determining what talent is anymore. That's why they go out and buy this stuff, because it's already proven that it works. So they're, they're already late to the game in buying something that works. They did not develop or create anything. They went nope. and bought something that already works because they're not capable. They can't look at that before it becomes a hit and say it's going to be a hit. Now that it's a hit, they want to go buy it because they're incapable of determining. Like you and I, we had ears for records. We had an ear for a hit. You know, I had a label. You know, I have a label rep. Send me a cassette. Uh, Hootie and a Blowfish. We're thinking of signing this guy. What do you mean you're thinking of signing this guy? Give him your left testicle, whoever he is. I'll right. Be you have an ear. When you're in this industry, you know, you yeah. hear, you see. These guys at the top, a lot of these people at the top, even in Hollywood, they don't have that ability. That's why yeah. they just go sure. back and, re and regurgitate the same crap over and over and over and over again. By the way, I'm going to send you a song when we get off. Uh, my youngest son, Corey, okay. just wrote a hit, man. Corey did. Yeah, Corey. On the road again? No, it, that's probably a follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> right after I, right after we finish up, uh, I'm stuck on stupid over you, my my lady. <laughs> no, but this is it, it, it's. It, I'm not even gonna. I shouldn't have told you who did it because I want your honest opinion. All right, anyway, I'm gonna send it to you and uh, uh, please give me some feedback. I will. Now I, again, I, Street I, News yeah. Network, right? Streetnewsnow.com. Streetnewsnow.com or uh, iradiocoach.com. The letter I, radiocoach.com. Oh, you got the I. You got that's a good, do, nice domain. Nice. Not bad. What'd you pay for that? Twelve ninety five. Nice. And, and and there's some jerk that owns radiocoach.com, and he wants me to pay, pay him fifteen grand for it. I told him to go bite me. I would I would have I would have put it a little differently to him, but <laughs> you're, you're, you've always been the diplomat between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what I told him. <laughs> Take yeah, a hike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna do this every Monday. Here we go back and they don't forget the back in the day group on Facebook, on MeWe, on a variety of different platforms. The video, different platforms, including Twitch, YouTube, uh, but, 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 Rumble. We upload it. It's on demand. You can always catch the back the the, the uh, archive shows. Lee Michaels joining us uh, today. Thank you, Sal. Thank you. It was good. To, look, if we can't see each other, at least we can see each other here. You know. That's right. Yeah. One the, one, the only I way you gonna see me any other way is you're gonna have to come here. I, Not look, until after May. I ain't, you, got, I ain't got no problem. I ain't got no problem. I may not get out of here till May with this shit that's happening. The snow we're getting now. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. Uh, TheBeatChicago.com. You like classic R and B. You like old school movies, TV. You saw all the TV shows and the history of WBMX, house music, all that stuff. It's a it's an old school lover's paradise. 
thebeachchicago.com. Brought to you by digitalsaviorschicago.com. That's me. <laughs> I got like five hats tonight. 815-556-2685. You ring, I bring. We pick up and we deliver. All right, we're done. We're out of here. Lee, love you, my friend. Tell Thank everybody, you. I, tell everybody I says I. Hug mom for me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hear from her soon, I'm sure. I love her stuff, and I'm, I'm promoting it out here. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Take God care. God bless you, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye.